Hello, I'm Corjan, and this is a tutorial of the Applied Energistics mod, specifically the ME system that that mod has in it. So, the ME system is really cool. Um, it allow it's basically like logistics pipes, if any of if you have ever played with that. Uh, basically, it's a giant storage system. You can uh, automatically take things out of the storage system uh, to put in things like furnaces or centrifuges, or you can put things into the system automatically. Like, say, you wanted to uh, put uh, uh, grind up the ores into dust and then send it into this furnace and then take it out of the furnace, and there you go, you have ingots in your system. So, <clears throat> to start off with this system, I'm going to show you the very, very basics, and then I'm going to get into a little bit more complicated stuff. So this is called an ME controller. Uh, you, for every ME system, you need one and exactly one of these. Now, what it does is it, it uh, allows uh, power to all of the connected devices that are related, like the ME chest, which I will uh, show in a second. Uh, when you open up the controller, you have a little a little GUI here, and at the top it tells you uh, that it's online, how much energy is used. Now, the ME controller can use two different types of energy. It can use uh, Minecraft Joules and EU. Uh, it, for this example, I'm using a quantum generator, so I'm, I'm supplying with the EU. These units here... Uh, are just a random unit that's uh, with this uh, mod. The unit is uh, equal to 2 EU, and I'm not sure how many MJ, but I'll look that up and put it in the description. So, the ME controller doesn't really do anything by itself. Uh, you just have a cool block with, with a GUI here that you open up. So, what, you, what else you'll need to have the very, very, very basic ME system is an ME chest and when you open it up, it looks kind of like a chest with a slot here, but all these slots are grayed out. You can't put anything in here. So what you need is a storage cell. Uh, this is the smallest storage cell. It stores 1,024 bytes and up to 63 types. Now, this may sound kind of like jargon, but to simplify it, you can hold about 8 items per byte and you can have 63 different kinds of items so say I want to store this cobblestone you'll see that ha that it uh, changes the font there I'll show you why in a second uh, and it and it shows that it has 16 bytes now it's not exactly 8 because you need to write what kind of item it is and that takes a certain amount of bytes and then how many items it is, and that takes a certain amount of bytes. But one MK, ME1K storage can hold 8,192 cobblestone. So, this is, this is all well and good, but how do, I, how do I get a better system? How do I store all my stuff? Well, you, can't, uh, you, can, you can do several things. You can put more ME chests and, and store them that way. But then you can't really access them all at once, can you? Say, I'll, I'll just put storage there, and I'll put these cobblestone there. Now, you'll notice that the text here is small, but it shows exactly how much you have instead of numbers of stacks or something like that. Which is really cool when you have a bunch of items. So, you have two different chests. They're basically serving like chests for now. This is why I'll show you the access terminal. The access terminal, voila, it shows you absolutely every item that it is connected to, as long as it's connected to the controller. And it it's sortable. You can sort it by number of items, by what, what order the cells are in, by the name. You can sort it up or down. You can store slash craftable. And I'll talk about that in a, minute, in a little bit. You can also type in what you're looking for, and you'll see that you've got red cobblestone and cobblestone there. And you can also, 
like you notice I, I haven't used any sort of cable or anything. You've got the controller here, the ME chess, and the access terminal. They're all right next to each other. Well, what happens if you want to have a, a large system? Well, you use this stuff. It's called ME cable. And you can you can have it, as far as I know, you can have it as long as you want, as, as long as it's in, an, in, in a loaded chunk. But it, it'll co connect to the uh, access terminal, and there you go. Um, the controller, as you notice, the units have gone up, so every device you have connected to it will increase the energy usage. So next, I'm going to show you the ME drive. Now, so you've got these ME chests. That's all well and good. You can It's basically like a chest. But what if you just want to use these access terminals? You never really want to go up, up, up to the chests. Well, you've got this ME drive. Now, it's really good because, like, when you open it up, it's like, what, what, do you, what do you do with this? But what you can do is you can put the storage cells in the drive, and notice you can, when you take this out, uh, you'll, it keeps this, the data in it, so that's a good way of, uh, of transporting material as well. So when you store, like, put these cells in the drive, they just have the cells, and you can't really tell what's in them unless uh, unless you preformat it, which I'm going to go over next. But so you have this these drives, and they're just in there. So you have to use the access terminal with the drives, but they act pretty much like a uh, like an ME chest. However, you can fit up to what is it eight? No, ten. You can fit up to ten storage cells in this drive. So that's good for having large amounts of storage, and this is the basic, basic, basic part of ME system. So we're going to take that stuff out, and I will show you the preformatter. Grab some cobblestone. All right, so say you want this storage to, to have both red cobblestone and cobblestone, and that's all you want it to have. So you would format it like this, and you would and you would name it so you would know what what it's formatted for. And voila, it's formatted. Now that's all well and good, but how do you get all this stuff out of there and into there really easy instead without doing it all? Um, without doing it manually. Well, you need something called an I.O. port. Now, you, what you do with the I.O. port is you connect it directly to the system, like so, and you've got this GUI here, and you're like, what do I do with that? Well, on the left you see this picture of a cell, and then an arrow, and the picture of a drive, and it transfers to and fro drives. So I'm going to put the cobblestone preformatted drive in here, or cell, Excuse me, and I will put this one, which has uh, two stacks of red cobblestone here, so it'll go into the drive. And that was quick. It 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 moves stuff really fast, so it was hard to catch. But you'll see that it went into the drive because there are more bytes being used. And you can look in the terminal, and there we go. We've got all of it. So. That covers the preformatter. Now I'm going to show you this nifty device, the ME interface. Now, actually, I'll show you the interface in a little bit. I'll show you the import and export buses first. So, like I said earlier, uh, you can automatically send things like through the system and and do stuff automatically. Uh, say you have a forestry farm and you want to automatically put uh, the saplings and uh, the dirt and the fertilizer in it. Well, you use the export bus with that. And how it works is you just stick it into the side of the machine that you want it to go on. And it looks like this, like a little arrow thing. And and you've got to open it up and, uh, and you've got to uh, configure it. So... Say we want to smell all of our red cobblestone. Well, we'll put it. We'll put the 
the export bus there and we will connect it to our system there and you notice that it goes all in well it's going really slow and it's not really going to get into the induction furnace very quickly so we'll change it to move stacks of items at a time and that way it moves all of the items in that it will fit but you'll notice that the furnace is going to fill up really fast if you do that so you're going to want to put an import bus on the side of the machine that uh, that uh, outputs so a furnace outputs stuff on the side so you would put the uh, ex uh, the import bus on the side of it and you can configure that to only import certain items but we're just going to leave it blank and but you notice that it's not actually importing any items that's because the drive only supports cobblestone and red cobblestone so we're going to need another storage cell and I'll just put it in this ME chest here so you can see it and you see it's importing this red rock now it's also importing really slowly and we export it stacks at a time so why can't we do it stacks at a time on import which is what exactly we just did so now we have so that the system automatically smelts red cobblestone into red rock notice I put it into the system and it is uh, smelting right now so that's all cool now what's this about logistics pipe you say so I was a really big fan of the logistics pipes mod it, it was a uh, it was an add-on to buildcraft that allowed you to basically store and craft any items that you wanted in the system well to craft things automatically you have to use this device called well it's 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 a multi-block structure but it's called an me assembly uh, or me molecular assembly so i'm going to build the smallest one first so you need containment walls on the uh, edge corners i guess i could call it like this And you need heat vents in the sides. You need at least one pattern provider. And you can use uh, crafting CPUs to uh, increase the size, to increase the speed. But this is the smallest one, so you can only put a, a pattern provider in it. But as you notice, the multi block structure has appeared. And it's got this nifty GUI that looks like a chest. And well how do we make it work so what we need is a pattern to put into well first we need to connect it to the system but to make it work within the system we need to we need to put a pattern in there so what we need is a pattern encoder Where is it? there it is we need a pattern in, oops pattern encoder and this looks like a crafting GUI. So we put the blank pattern in the, well, let's grab some stone. We're going to make a pattern for uh, redstone bricks. So we need to put the pattern in, and it, it'll automatically show up. And we need a blank plan, or blank pattern, and put that in the right. And to do that, you click in code and you'll see that it crafts four red rock brick with four red rock so we can put that in there and when you hold shift you can see that you can see what it crafts and when you mouse over it it, it tells you what it, what, what it crafts and what it crafts it with so when you go over to this uh, access terminal you'll see that you, you, you can craft this red rock brick so let's go ahead and craft a stack of red rock brick. You'll notice that it's, it crafts it relatively quickly, but we can make it even quicker. Uh, oops, that's not a stack. Uh, but anyway, we can we can craft it even quicker uh, with more crafting CPUs. So 
how do we know when we're missing items? Like the logistics pipes always always would tell you it was missing materials. Well, you need another object called a crafting monitor. Oop, there it is. I guess I already had it in my door. So we're gonna put a crafting monitor right there, monitor. And you'll notice that there's nothing being crafted right now, so we aren't missing any materials. So well, I guess we're just we're we we don't need any materials. And we've got the red rock. So I'm gonna show you now the interface. So the interface is whenever you want to craft something, but it doesn't necessarily have a crafting recipe in the crafting table, you, you want to use an interface. The, uh, the interface can use, be used for practically any recipe, but the recipe I'm going to show you is crafting stone from cobblestone using a furnace. So I'm going to connect the interface to the system, put it right on top of this induction furnace, and you notice it has this GUI here. What we're interested in is this processing line here. You put the encoded, encoded plan there. So, I'm going to need a piece of stone before we start. So, when we want to craft stone, we would put it in the pattern encoder as if it were a crafting recipe, but you notice that it doesn't show up because it's not it's not a, a traditional crafting recipe, it's a smelting recipe. So we would put cobblestone here and stone here, and we've got this coded, encoded assembler pattern there with the crafting one stone, and we would put it here in the interface. And it has this processing here, and let's just see what we got. Oop, down. And you'll notice that you can craft it there now. So let's craft one of them. And You'll notice that it takes a second. Actually, you'll notice that nothing showed up. Well, what's going on here? You'll, when you go over to the furnace, you see that the stone has been crafted, but it doesn't go into the system because we need to import it into the system. So we would connect an import bus to the side of here so that it can import it right away after the interface sends it to uh, the furnace to craft it. You can connect interfaces to pretty much any machine. You can connect it to a centrifuge, you can connect it to build craft assembly table, um, you can connect it to rolling machines. However, with the rolling machine you need the uh, recipe like laid out in the rolling machine before you, uh, it'll allow you to craft it. So, that is all that. What do we? What else we need to do? Well, we can use chests if if we so desire. We've got this chest with a piece of cobblestone in it. Uh, we'll put Emmy storage bus on the side. Now the storage bus, what it does is it basically connects this chest to the system. You notice that we've got even more cobblestone than we had. But when we put it back in, it goes into that drive as priority instead of here. But we can just stick the rest of this stuff in there. And you'll notice that all these items are here in the terminal. So that's a really nifty thing you can do with storage buses. You could have like an overflow chest or something. In, uh, say you don't want to preformat everything. So you would preformat all the drives you would want to keep in the system, and you would put a, a storage bus in there. Okay, the last thing I have to show you guys is a level emitter. A level emitter. And what this will do is it will emit a redstone signal when there's a certain when there's an, a certain number of an item in the system. So this GUI is it's pretty simple. Uh, you get to you can type in a number. Or you can, uh, or you can add or subtract numbers, and you put the item in here, and it will either emit when the levels are above the limit, or emit when levels are below the limit. So that concludes my tutorial on the ME system. I hope you like it.